What's, What's going, going on, on tonight? tonight? I want to share something with you. And I was just going out about, and the ancient put it on my mind's eye to tell you all this story. Because at the time, I was doing a lot of studying on Waker, ancient Egypt. Now, mind you, this was 2009. And I was in Red Granite Correctional Institution. You know, at that time I was studying, doing research, and I wasn't real well well rounded with certain things dealing with the mysticism and uh, the occult. I just knew that my father was a Mason. And only thing that I recall um, from him is things that I seen that told me that he was um, highly connected. And when I spoke to him about it, um, he was like, hey, you know, don't, he said he ain't afraid to be no man. We can make a, a hand sign, bring a plane down, we can make a, a jester, stop a train. You know, I was like, ooh. But uh, outside of that, I didn't know nothing about none of that. So as I was doing my research, I was doing my research in, I should say, weekend and a lot of other little things. I was forming myself in my mind's eye to be well First, and want to study that practitioner type lifestyle. And what really caught my attention is the ability to be able to perform miracles. Now, mind you, I was so mad at my um, my first wife at the time because at that time I was divorced. She had divorced me while I was in the joint, uh, and I received the divorce papers. Mind you. While I was in um, um, Supermax But She had reason to I wasn't the perfect fit Due to my action behavior and conduct And you know uh, Amongst other factors but. So I end up Going in the kitchen In Red Granite Grabbing some hot water Now mind you A lot of the things that I see in my mind's eye Are being conveyed I'm being showed I'm being told Uh what I need to do and how it's gonna manifest. Now, mind you, people used to always think I done lost my mind, but literally they knew it wasn't nothing wrong with it. It's just how I deal with my anger. You know, I had the ability that when I used to see Luke Cage, Luke Cage kind of remind me of Lucifer caged up. Because even though Luke Cage was strong, he was able to do things. Now, mind you, I couldn't understand it, but I knew that whenever I used to stretch you know, study, you know, do my little martial art, you know, stretching and all this other stuff. I used to yell loud. Ah! People tell you, who knew me from out of state and all through the prison who knew me at the time when I was loco. Loco G. And I became a mirror. A lot of people know me. And a lot of cats who, who remember me now remember. Because I'm that only cat who know me go outside at wreck time. Used to yell. I used to let all my anger out. Take my shirt off, and we had the pull-up bars, you know, the little dip bars. Used to dip, man. I used to let my anger out, man. I used to be mad as all out does at what I'm going through, what I experience, just life itself. And I get up on that dip bar, the the bars. Listen, the bars. I get to them bars, and I used to, you know, like used to be a blocking bar. Hard. Boom, boom. And listen, instead of it was hurting, it was actually feeling good. The 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 little pain, the little the little tiny little pain, I would transmute it and it felt good. And I used to keep doing it, that it kind of filled me, gave me more energy. So I knew that with my energy and transmuting or being angry and channeling this energy, I knew what I could do with it. So what I used to do is, I used to, when I grabbed that hot water I was telling you about, what did it allude to, this energy. I went in the kitchen, grabbed that hot water, and I was still angry and mad about what I was experiencing, um, what I was going through with that. I ain't never let that go. It was unresolved. So I went outside at rec time, went out back, and on the court, right, we got the left side, we got the right side. This side the basketball hoop, 
the other side of the basketball. And I went in the middle. You know, we got the key right here. And then I went in the middle, right where the circle is. And what I did was, I stood in the middle and I poured that hot water around that circle. And I started to write different formulas inside that circle on the yellow line, right? On the, on the yellow line. And I would yell, look up and I would yell and I would invoke whatever it is I want done. Then I went back in, grabbed the hot water, came back out and went in the little corner area, you know, in the old book of shadows and said, when you do certain things, you're supposed to convey, you, you write in your book of shadows. Let's just say what I was doing with those stones and the mud and all that other stuff and was pouring hot water on them little stones and whatnot that later on in the news, right? They showed on the news. The news showed, as I looked up, the news showed on the news that there was a ring, a circular ring in the sky. Now, mind you, none of this ever showed or happened. Hey, listen, it was never talked about, spoke about up until when I started doing this. A ring, they were showing a ring that was in the sky later on uh, that night. And it was being talked about all through the news. Then not only that, but then later on that week, be careful what you do. Cause what you do, you get what you ask for. Man, later on that, later on that night, later on that week, I should say, it was a flood that flooded the area in West Dallas. The flood was so bad that the flood flooded the basements and everybody else, all West Dallas in 2009, people tell you it was a flood. How I knew? Because my ex told me that it was a flood. This is my first wife, what I'm talking about. That there was a flood that happened. The flood flooded the basement. And all of your stuff that you had that was in the box, that was boxed up, you know, waiting for you to come out, it was flooded up. The flood was so bad, it flooded it flooded the basement. Now, what I did manifest in the realms above with the ancient one showing the ring and as well as ultimately that, you know, that wasn't my intention but ultimately end up flooding West Dallas, the basements, the people's basements and stuff. I gathered and flooded my belongings everything else that I had I was in that basement yeah it went to its destination but it also affected me because my stuff was in that basement and all of my belongings I didn't have nothing clothes all that stuff. pictures man all my books yeah, at that basement. time man everything gone clothes shoes all that they had to throw away so you gotta be careful about what you do because what you do may work and at that same time it'll come back so for those who who target people in the work that they do or you practitioners and you know you call yourself uh warlocks warlocks is caucasians wizards is identified with melanated people the warlocks are the ones who have long beards you know warlocks and warlocks are what caucasians are and uh, wizards is what they call um, melanated folk. So I want to tell you another um, little story that happened, man. When I was in a, at the times in the county jail, I must have been uh, what? I was bad in the motherfucker when I had got locked up, and pretty much I was emulating not a lot someone who I looked up to. That was my my uh, cousin insane. You know, he's from the shy, so I got groomed in into this uh, mob lifestyle um, by him. Indoctrinated, saturated, you know what I'm saying? And this uh, growth and development. But I was emulating him because a lot of stuff that I learned, I was taught by him. Knowledge X, XYZ. So I started to become what he was. You know what I mean? So when he got popped off in the things I was doing, that's where I got the name Loco from. And they started calling me Loco. 
So mind you, when I had went to when I finally got popped off, September 21st, 1991, I was what 17, turned 17 in the county. Now mind you, I was in the county 360 days. Now for those who know the old county jail, Jeffrey Bama was you right talking about next prison being city. harsh. Now mind you being locked up in a gang tier. And you a gang banger. And we mobbing every day. Motherfucker, man, let's just say individuals getting violated, get da, 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 this, that, and the third. You know what I'm saying? It is what it was. I'm just talking about that lifestyle. I ain't gonna speak on it because what we did, we keep that uh to ourselves. But ultimately, what ended up happening was I want to make a change for good. You know, got to reading the Bible, got to turning my ways around, and I really want to help out of prison. So I reached out for God for help. Cause I felt like at the same time that you know maybe God can help me out that situation, so I actually reached for religion. I was internally um, true that I wanted to learn and you know fill in the Bible and all that, but at the same time I was pretty much and and the divine knew, the Most High knew that I was pretty much embracing that because I just wanted to get out, and the Most High probably knew that. Once I got back out, I was gonna go back to doing the things I did. Is the reason why I ended up listening to North. What 20 years? 20 years to the first count, 20 years to the second count, 20 years to the third count, 20 years to the fourth count. Facing 80 years, ran um, concurrent, I was given a whole 20 years. But uh, anyway, so what ultimately ended up happening was I had um was in this little Christian group, and all of us had uh, disciple-like names. Mine was Peter. One, one name was Paul. I think Antonio, Antonio Vaughn, Antonio. Uh, I think Antonio was was Paul. I think Bob was uh, Mark, and another cat was Luke. And we had we had Bible study and reading the word, man. Listen, man, I was I was feeling when I was reading because I was feeling. Listen, man, we can believe anything and manifest. But I was believing the word and I was manifesting what I was believing that when we had this this uh the Bible study was about faith. And while we was doing Bible study, used to be an old cat man, a lot of cats remember him, used to be two seven Rodney. Rodney used to sit down up in that chair to mind you. This the uh um, this is like the gallery area. And it, and and it's jails, man. We're talking about jails barred in and the phones was, you know, certain organizations ran the phone, we ran the phones. And it was a cat, uh, 27, Ronnie. Ronnie used to get on that phone, and he was facing a life sentence. He was on that phone. All he used to do was play with himself and talk on the phone and shoot the breeze with his bra. To be, he was cussing up stuff. And we having a Bible study. And it was about faith. This time it was about faith. And I said, I said, in the name of Jesus, I didn't doubt it. I said the name I said I said watch we ain't gonna have no more problems in the name of Jesus watch that phone is not gonna work we ain't gonna have no problems in the name of Jesus and I said watch that phone we ain't gonna have no issue ain't gonna be on that phone may the gods curse me if I lie now mind you later on that day later on that night we end up having Bible study again you know we got together we got the room we got the reading and when they open up the doors, they open it down for us, you know, bust them down for us, you know, everybody run to their phones, you know, da 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 da. He get back on his phone, throw his, his pillow and his blanket down. We're in the room, we're doing Bob study, shooting the breeze, that's how we did our time. And everybody looking to see, you know, I know, I know the answer, they, you know, while we have a Bob study, everybody looking at the phone, he go to it. Now, mind you, he get on the phone. He get on the phone, he get to talking. It's a cold sip you can put in the phone with it. It allow you to stay on the phone without it turning off for 15 minutes. You put that code in it. Certain things you do, man, you stay on the phone. You ain't got to worry about it saying 15 minutes. He on the phone, shooting it up. And while we have a Bible study, I'm like, well, to myself, I said, okay, God, I guess it ain't. It ain't meant for me to, uh, it ain't meant for it to happen. It do what he do. While we reading, you know, everybody take a turn reading. The phone turn off on him. So he put the little code in there again, boom, did the calling, and they didn't pay attention. They heard it the first time, they didn't pay attention, but they turned around and looked the second time, it happened again. 
all of a sudden his phone would not work. His phone wasn't wouldn't work no more. And nobody wanted to get on the phone. It was like, yo, man, what's up? Uh, you on that phone? Can we get on that phone? It was like, man, there's something wrong with this phone. Man, this motherfucking phone ain't working. And the phone stopped working. Nobody wanted to get on for all that day. They had to bring somebody in to fix the phone. The power of faith and believing. And what you believe, you can manifest. I don't care. You can believe in an ant. If you believe in an ant, it ain't just the name of Jesus. Because the power is not in the names, the power is believing in the, the energy and the faith that you can move mountains. You see? I can say Yahweh. I can say any name and it manifests. You see? Now, I believe that the Bible at the time, I said Jesus because it was the faith that manifested. Now, mind you, I was so elated that I thank God I ain't really too much want to do anything to stuff, but thank the most high. Then later on, I should say that week, later on that week, we should want to stay up to watch uh, Soul Train and uh, what's the other one? Uh, Friday Night Theater and all this other stuff, Apollo, Friday Night. Now, mind you, man, we should stay up. Now, mind you, it's our time to hold the TV. Every, every Saturday, Sunday, they rotate. This section get to watch TV. This section. Now, it was our time, our section to watch TV. Now, man, mind you, listen. Man. We playing car, we playing talk, we playing spades, but man, deep down the side, we waiting to watch Soul Train. Now, mind you, I'm so caught into the religious aspect that, you know, I don't want to lust. I don't want to sin. You understand? And even when I used to have sleep, that the sexual energy of the nocturnal emissions used to happen without me yet even having to do anything. And I want to say this too That I even had I ain't going to say that <laughs> I'm going to keep that to myself But uh, I'm going to tell you about this here man This is possible Because at the time When we stayed up late And I think Apollo Was about to go off All of a sudden The TV Man we stayed up late About 2 o'clock in the morning Stayed up late And all of a sudden Dog on TV start to snow and flicker, and right when a right when um Soul Train was about to come on, all of a sudden the snow, the TV want to snow and flicker and all this other stuff. Now mind you, I'm hearing them. Everybody in they cell throwing books, magazines. Everybody trying to do what they can to hit the antenna to rotate it because when the CEO coming around, we had to move the TV and adjust it. So everybody snapping. Listen, we had maybe 10 up, 10 minutes, 10 more minutes for Apollo to come on. Man, individual make it with, with paper crafty, making long ass spears to try to reach out, to try to hit the antenna to move it, and only soon as you get close to the break in the phone. <laughs> hey, but listen, so I'm on my I'm on my bunk, I'm on the bed, you know, they talking about, yeah, man, you know, that just God, God don't want them to uh to watch, you know, with some of the Sully saying, and everybody snapping, man. I deep down the side, I want to watch too. Cause I want to get out of, you know, being around hard legs. I want to watch something different. I, I wanted to watch um uh Soul Train. So while laying on my butt on my bunk on my bed, I got to talking to God. I say, God, I promise I won't sin. I just want to watch because I'm tired of just I'm tired of not, you know, being entertained. I want to watch something different. Listen, may the gods curse me if I lie. It's a saying that they say in Islam, and I still say it to this day, that if you invoke the curse upon you, if you lying, that the curse will fall upon you. May the gods curse, curse me if I lie. Listen, I stood up. I stood up. And I said, look, look, listen, I stood up and I acted on faith. I said, look, the TV's looking better. Look, the TV show a better look. Got up, pointed at the TV. Man, listen, I'd have looked like a fool if I'd have said that, jumped up, and said, look, the TV show a better. Look, and listen, mind you, I already told God what I wanted, and I acted on attention, and I said, look, the TV show a better. Man, no sooner than I said that, all of a sudden, that snow that was snowing, all of a sudden, the snow looked like the snow did like this here. 
Then the line came down. Then it shifted this way. Then it shifted that way. Rotated over like this here. And all of a sudden, a pristine picture show. Man, get the fudge out of here. Man, a tear must have almost crossed my eye because I couldn't believe what I was seeing my dog on self. Then I said, you know what? I told the most high than myself. I said, you know what? I thank you. And I said, you know what? I don't even want to watch TV. I was so grateful because I said that I wasn't going to see it. I don't want to see it. And I ended up going to sleep. I wanted to watch the Soul Train so bad, but I was so elated and grateful that that miracle happened that I just went to sleep, laid on my back and went to sleep. The power divine. Man, you mean to tell me that that look when I said that and it happened, everybody in my in my um cell in my room turned around and looked at me, then looked at the TV. Now mind you, they didn't think or I identify that the manifestation from the Most High manifested through me from me. No sooner they seen them little girls in the booty dancing, they forgot about the miracle that happened. Just that quick, they didn't care nothing about the point and be saying, look, the TV getting better, look. What transpired, it went in one ear and out the other. But I want you to know that if you believe in the ancient ones, you believe in your source, and you believe whatever it is you believe in, remember, what the reason behind what it is you're doing and honor your commitment to the reason why you asked the divine to grant you that mission, that miracle. Because if you don't honor what it is that you say you're going to do, you will be held accountable. I just want to share that story, man, because it, that was miraculous. And, and for those who were witchcraft or source, whatever it is you follow, the ancient, some of these ancient ways and that's what you want to do, just know that whatever you sent for come back threefold it's the law of three apply, whatever you put forth, come back threefold, to so just be mindful what you do and how you do what you do and use what you have for the good of mankind, if your abilities that you feel that resonate is to help mankind help mankind, and don't be a leech to the abilities that the most high give you add that what brought about that topic that made my father tell me what he told me that you know I was doing my little bit of rapping when I was uh, in RCI you know, before I was in Red Granny now this was 2000 and 2000 no 2001 I ended up getting out of prison in 2001 sometime right and uh, my father had visited. And first time he ever visited. When he came up, I had a song for it, right? I was beating on the table. I was like, we need some unity. We need some unity. We need some unity. We need some unity. They got me wanting deep inside who's my enemies. We kill each other on the street. We need some unity. We got me wanting deep inside who's my enemies, right? And then when I went in, I got to talk about everything. And my father heard me say, the trilateral in the matrix of the design, right? And my father eyes did like this here. And he started smiling. And he got the nod, right? That pricked my psyche. So when I stopped rapping, and then when I finished rapping, I, I went out and I asked my father, I said, Dad, are you a Mason? And that's when he told me what he told me. But uh, what I want y'all to know is, you never know what your family part of or affiliated with. Close mouth don't get fed. You see, with certain people who live in a world of secrecy, close mouth don't get fed. And the only way they open up their mouth is you knock. So you gotta knock on their hat rack and ask those questions. Ask your family. Search signs, search things you see. Ask, ask them. Because they ain't gonna tell you until you ask. And then it's predicated on them if they're feeling you worthy enough. Oh yeah, wait, wait, wait. What happened was I had told my father I had a vision the day before of me being in 
like the King Arthur Cal Palace with like the Knights of the Round Tables. And when I walked away from the table and I got close to a wall, the wall opened up and I was going in and it led to some stairs going down. And uh, when I said that, that's when I asked my father if he was a Mason. You'll notice in my name that when you write out Duran, then Ashley up under it is going to form D A Y, the triangulate, the tri formation, D A Y. And you know, day, the name day, whichever way is showing, day means light. And with the letters D A Y, the only letter that's showing in day, which means light, this light, this Lucifer, is in that 14 again in my name. I bring this up because the ancient ones brought to my attention. And I was riding and I looked at the hospital that I was born at. Guess what the name of that hospital is? St. Mary, St. Mary's Hospital. So in actuality, Mary did give birth to me.